Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So I did a video that was recommended, you know, about Poland and, you know, their fight against the Germans and the Russians, Soviet at the time, right? And it was a very interesting video, lots of history, right? Because I didn't know anything like that happened with Poland. However, someone hit me on Instagram and they were like, yo, I got a lot of video, video, videos, videos for you to check out about Poland. So today we're going to actually be checking out one of his recommendations. And uh, the title of that video is why Poland is quietly becoming a superpower. And um, I'm hoping this is the right video because um, I went to YouTube. I searched that and I saw a video titled why Poland is quietly becoming Europe's next superpower. So pretty, pretty similar, not the exact same, but I'm hoping this is the video. And uh, without further ado, let's get right into this video. Thank you for watching. If you have any recommendations, you can hit me on Instagram, but you can also click that link in the pinned comment section and you can recommend videos about Poland or Europe or whatever. And I'll check it out as soon as possible. Thank you guys for watching. Please do like and subscribe. Without further ado, man, let's get right into this video. This is the classic stereotype of Poland, a grey, poor, post-communist country with nothing to offer but cheap, unqualified labor. But this stereotype is no longer true, and Poland of today looks more like this. In the past 30 years, Poland went through an incredible transformation. <laughs> Stop, ain't no way. Stop, ain't no way. Stop! Ain't no way! Growing more than any other economy in Europe, and faster than Asian tigers like Singapore, South Korea, or Taiwan. Today, Poland is emerging as a major technological hub. The Polish economy might overtake the UK by 2030, and after years of suffering from a... 2030? Hold on! We in 24, right? We in 24, we, we, we about to hit 26, 2025, so we got five years... Ain't no way. That's crazy. That's actually crazy. 35 seconds in this video, I'm going crazy. Massive brain drain, highly skilled Poles are now coming back home. And it goes way beyond the economy, as Poland is building one of the most powerful militaries in Europe and quickly Shit. becoming one of the most influential European countries. As all of these changes continue to pick up pace, it's getting impossible to ignore Poland's growing importance. But there is still one thing that could destroy the entire Polish miracle. A threat not from the outside, but from within. So how did Poland manage to become Europe's biggest success story. Why is it doing so much better than everyone else? And what is the challenge threatening to end everything that it has achieved? This is the rise of Poland. But first, a word from the sponsor of this video. Blinkist. Right now on Blinkist, I'm reading on war time, but I Blinkist is a stiff over create your right now you the video. But to understand why Poland's transformation is such a big deal, we need to understand where it started from. In the 20th century, after becoming the first country to be invaded by Nazi Germany and losing 20% of its population in World War II, Poland became part of the Eastern Bloc as one of the Soviet-controlled satellite states. Like in the rest of the Eastern Bloc, the 40 years of communism were times of deep economic isolation, stagnation, and overall hopelessness. Poland had to import the Soviet system of centrally planned economy, where state owned almost everything, private businesses were mostly non-existent, and since they were basically a Soviet colony, the Polish economy was subservient to interests of the Soviet Union, and forced to make, buy, and sell whatever Moscow wanted it to, whether it made economic sense or not. As a result, the centrally planned economy was deeply dysfunctional and mismanaged, crippled by constant shortages of basic goods and lack of resources. When the communist regimes of Eastern Europe finally fell in 1989 and Poland became free and independent, it emerged from behind the Iron Curtain as one of the poorest countries in Europe, with highly dysfunctional infrastructure and public services, and with basically no experience with capitalism and participating in a global economy. The average salary was 10 times lower than in Germany, and the country was struggling with hyperinflation. In other words, it wasn't a country you would bet on to become a major success. But skip 30 years ahead into the future, and that's exactly what happened. So how did Poland do it? 
From 1992, Poland managed to grow consecutively for almost three decades, achieving the longest period of growth in modern European history. Now, not many countries are able to do that, and the reason is that usually, when they find a successful strategy, they tend to stick to it long after it stops working. But Poland, so far, managed to find a different growth strategy for each of the three decades, which allowed it to grow so fast for so long. Yeah, I, I feel that part because the reality is once you know once you've achieved success with a spe specific you know pattern or you know way how you did whatever you did is pattern right you you your 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 norm is to stick to it even when it fails you because you're probably like wait maybe i made a mistake with one of the steps that i usually did you know however the smartest thing you can do is when something rises, prepare for its fall because nothing really stays up, right? So when you prepare for the fall of that, the preparation that you should be doing is simply, okay, this is going good, let me make something else. So something is struggling while this is doing great, I have something else struggling. When this is falling, this is rising. And then that crashes, this goes up, I have something. Yeah, it's, it's the smartest thing to do. Starting in so, the early yeah, 1990s, smart, smart. its main challenge, like in every other post-communist country, was how to transition from a centralized state-owned economy to a capitalist one. In most countries, these transitional reforms were in one way or another quite problematic. Either they took too long or they became pretty corrupt, and much of the state wealth was transferred into hands of a few wealthy oligarchs who got rich because of their political connections. Poland, on the other hand, managed this transition arguably better than others. It transitioned to capitalism quickly, but privatized most of the state-owned companies slowly, and a few years later than most of its neighbors, after the chaos calmed down, and after it became a little bit harder to steal everything. Thanks to that, it became pretty much the only post-communist country without an economy dominated by oligarchs, and without an economic crash in the 1990s. But despite the good start, in the early 2000s, this wasn't enough anymore in order to grow, and so the next phase was about globalization. In 2004, Poland joined the European Union and the open European market with a free movement of goods and services. Without any barriers between Poland and the rest of Europe, it made sense for Western European companies to move their manufacturing over to Poland, where they had a large and a very cheap pool of workers at their disposal. And while these companies kept most of the... Moi, mä olen Martti. Profit, Poland, got enough out of it to keep growing at a pretty fast pace. And joining the EU brought another major benefit, since one of its key principles is redistribution of money from wealthier member states to the less developed ones, in order to balance the wealth disparity across the Union. After joining, the Eastern European states started to receive a lot of money, and Poland managed to use them to build and improve everything from roads to universities. And again, in a lot more efficient way than in many other Eastern European countries. But that can still only take you as far, and many countries following a similar trajectory eventually fall into the so-called middle-income trap. If your economy is based on providing cheap labor for foreign companies, you can only grow to a certain level. And if That's you can't true. offer anything else That's, apart from yeah. that, and you don't have any major companies of your own, you're stuck. But so far, Poland seems to be avoiding that. 15 years ago, foreign companies were coming in to hire low-skilled and low-paid workers for menial labor. But today, they're coming because Poland has one of the largest pools of engineering talent in Europe. And instead of warehouses and basic factories, companies like Google are opening research and development hubs. Now, that said, Poland is still relatively poor, at least compared with most of Western Europe. But the growth so far has been impressive. Let me see how this hold on, hold on, hold on. And development hubs. Now, that said, Poland is still relatively poor, at least compared with. Because we got Lux. Yo, Lux is just different, you know, like, like, dude, what is wrong with Luxembourg? Um, Ireland, Denmark, Netherlands, Sweden, Belgium. Wow, okay, Belgium is above Germany. That's, that's, that's wild. Okay, Austria as well. Wow, Germany, Finland, uh, France, 
Malta, Italy, Czechia, uh, Slovenia, okay, Slovenia, Lithuania, Cyprus, above Spain, what? Estonia above Spain, Poland is right there with Spain. If Poland is close to Spain, I'm sorry, you're doing good. Like, Spain is like so known by probably, I don't know, I don't want to say everybody in this world knows Spain, but Spain is a very popular country across the globe right but um being being besides spain is actually pretty impressive hungary portugal romania latvia croatia okay not bad at all most of western europe but the growth so far has been impressive and unusually inclusive average wages in the country massively increased while inequality remained low and so it's not a growth that would only exist on paper or only help select few but it actually trickled down to the rest of the society and there's one more area outside of economic growth where Poland has been getting a lot of attention lately. And that's its unprecedented military oh, buildup. Sorry. Historically, Poland has some good reasons to be a little paranoid. Stuck between Germany and Russia, it has been invaded, partitioned, colonized, and stripped of its independence time and time again. And even though today it's in NATO, this historical memory is still there. And while most European countries were taking their peace dividends, Poland- That's the problem. Problem. The word NATO doesn't mean <laughs> I don't need a military. I don't need to be able to defend myself. It just means, bro, if I get into some crap, I can call on one of my brothers and my brother's going to pull up and they're going to try to help me. You know what I mean? But independence is a must. You got to be independent and you got to be ready to lock in and you got to be ready to defend your property, right? But obviously having, you know, backup or aid support is very good. But you can't look at the aid support as the main. You got to look at yourself, you know, and develop your own main source of protection has kept military funding at one of the highest levels in NATO. And after Shit. the Russian invasion of Ukraine, it went into an overdrive. It announced that in just a few years, it will increase its military spending to 5% of its GDP, higher than any other NATO member, double the size of its armed forces to 300,000, and buy thousands of tanks, fighter jets, and other military equipment. And before the end of the decade, Poland plans to have the most powerful ground forces in Europe, in what would be one of the most ambitious military buildups in modern European history. Now that being said, what Poland has achieved so far is impressive, and what it plans to achieve even more so. But it's yet to be seen if all that will actually happen. Despite its successes, there are some significant risks that could kill the entire Polish miracle. Talk to me. And not everyone is so bullish on Poland's future. For a long time, demography has been considered the number one threat, as around half a million people have left the country in the last 30 years. But now it looks like Poland managed to reverse this trend. In recent years, it has seen a reverse brain drain, as Poles and people with Polish heritage living abroad have started coming back to the country. And since the country took in over one and a half million Ukrainian refugees, the demographic trends are looking much better. And so there are really two major risks. First, while the growth has been impressive, Poland has not actually avoided the middle income trap completely. So far, it's still massively reliant on foreign investments. And although tech centers are being opened in Warsaw, they are set up by foreign companies rather than by Polish ones. And while that brings jobs and growth, once again, there is a limit to how high you can grow since most of the profits will always end up leaving the country in the end. In order to break into the big leagues, you need your own domestic giants in sectors with high added value. And Poland doesn't have that. Or at least, not yet. not yet. But the far bigger risk is of a completely different nature. And it concerns a part of the Polish story that we haven't touched on yet. The thing is that Poland is a deeply, deeply divided country. So much that we can almost talk about two different Polands. One liberal and progressive, and the other deeply conservative and religious. Like in the US, the two Polands are finding it increasingly really? difficult to coexist together, and surveys show that both sides are highly suspicious of each other, intolerant to opposing views, and increasingly refusing to compromise. Yeah, this is years, yeah, this is this is bad. If there's one thing you don't want, it's a divided country. Like, I hate to talk about this, but you know, the president got, you know, 
attempted on. I don't want to talk too much about it because I don't know how YouTube might react to it. But, you know, the attempt was on, you know, Donald Trump. And you look at a lot of people's comments and a lot of people's comments are not trying to figure out what happened. A lot of people's comments are just judging what happened. Some are saying, you know, he did it. It was a setup. Some are saying it must have been Mr. Joe. You know, nobody is like united and it's it's going to only get crazier because election is, you know, almost going to be here soon. Right. Yeah, it's a couple months out, but it's going to be here quite soon. So, yeah, this this is something that I actually um, I, 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 I hate division because it is it is the number one way to destroy a temple just divide anything like it doesn't matter what it is no matter how strong you are if you become divided like it kills you man first the current conservative government has been criticized by the liberal opposition for supposedly bending the rules in order to stay in power and it has had a growing beef with the european union that's threatening to cut poland off from eu funds as a punishment for not upholding the rule of law and the thing is that whatever side you cheer for, the end result is bad for both and exactly. for Poland in general. The country needs both parts of the population to coexist and work Shit. together. And it needs the EU if it wants to be truly successful. And if it doesn't manage to do that, the Polish miracle will be over soon, before it has really started. Damn. Them dudes in the past put in a lot of work, man. I really hope that the Polish people actually, you know, lock in and actually do what they got to do. According to this video, it seems like you guys have a real serious division problem. I myself, you know, I've, I've seen what division can actually do. That's the United States. We've seen, you know, how much of a mockery it is out there to the world when they look at the United States politics, right? So I really hope that y'all, you know, do whatever you got to do, you know, and um, stay up there, stay up in the top because it's fun to be at the top and it sucks to be at the bottom. But either ways, guys, thank you for watching this video. Any more recommendations, click that link in the pinned comment section. You can recommend video. I'll check them out as soon as possible. Thank you for watching this video. I'm out of here. Peace. <clears throat>